In today's video, we'll talk about Apple Home Hubs, where to place them, and how to understand the different protocols your devices use to communicate in your smart home. We'll demystify matter and give you the knowledge to make the right choices when adding new devices to your smart home. This is the blueprint for a reliable, responsive smart home system that just works. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about helping you build an easy Apple home, smart home with new videos and live streams published every week. Welcome back to our Apple Home 101 series. In the last video, we covered the importance of setting up a rock solid network for your smart home, the very critical first layer of your smart home foundation. If you missed that video, definitely check it out after this one. I'll put a link in the description. But today we're tackling the next crucial layer of your smart home foundation. That's understanding the different hubs and protocols. I think this is where a lot of people go wrong. They buy a bunch of smart devices without really understanding how they actually communicate with each other and with your smart home ecosystem. In this video, we'll cover the different types of Apple Home hubs and how to set them up properly, the major wireless protocols your devices use and why they matter, pun intended. We'll discuss what matter is all about and how it's changing the whole smart home landscape and what you need to know to future-proof your smart home. And by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly which hubs you need, where to place them, and which wireless protocols to look for when buying new devices. I think understanding how your smart home actually works and the protocols being used will help you build a smart home that actually works consistently throughout your entire house for years to come. If you're just starting out, don't worry, I'll break everything down into simple terms. And if you're more experienced, I think you'll still pick up some useful strategies to make your existing setup more reliable. Let's go ahead and start with the backbone of every Apple home ecosystem, and that is your home hubs. If you wanna set up your smart home using Apple home, you're gonna need a home hub. At the time of this recording, that can be a HomePod, a HomePod mini, or an Apple TV 4K. There have been some rumors that suggest we'll also see a new home hub device from Apple released sometime in the near future. So depending on when you're watching this, you may even have more options uh, for a home hub. Now with Apple Home, all of the processing of your smart home commands, automations, camera events and processing, all that's done through your Apple Home Hub. This is also what's required for you to be able to control your smart home remotely when you're away from home. You can have multiple home hubs throughout the house. In the Apple Home app, you can go to settings and see which home hubs are active and which is primary. You can turn on automatic selection or like me, you can choose specifically which hub you wish to be the preferred home hub. I chose my living room Apple TV 4K because it's the only one that I have in the house that is hardwired via ethernet to my router. Generally speaking, a hardwired connection is just always gonna be more stable and preferred over a wireless connection, which is why I chose this one as my primary hub. That said, if you don't have any home hubs that are hardwired, you should still be fine using your home hubs over Wi-Fi as long as you have a solid Wi-Fi network established in your home. At the time of this recording, the Apple TV 4K with Wi-Fi and Ethernet is the only Apple Home Hub sold with an Ethernet port. I'll also note that this Apple TV 4K has a thread radio built in, whereas the cheaper one does not. We'll discuss thread more in a minute, but I do wanna bring this up because I think if you do get an Apple TV 4K for your smart home, You'll definitely want to get that version that has the thread radio built in. Both the HomePod and the HomePod Mini also have thread radios built in, so either of these can be good as your home hub as well. Any additional hubs that you have will be used basically in like a standby mode, meaning if the connection is interrupted with your preferred home hub, one of the other ones will take over. Now you heard me mention Thread, which is a wireless protocol that smart devices may or may not use. So let's cover the different protocols that may exist in your smart home. This is a very important factor, I think, when choosing which smart home devices to purchase, and it's not always super clear. Your smart home devices like smart locks, bulbs, switches, and anything else in your smart home will use some sort of protocol to connect 
to your home ecosystem. And there are a few options. It could be thread, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, ethernet, or potentially something else utilizing a third party hub. So let's cover each of these so you understand the difference. Bluetooth is still an option that's been sort of phasing out in many cases. Bluetooth connected devices will often be a little bit slower to respond than other protocols. I have seen some good implementations of Bluetooth though, like flick buttons or switchbot devices both of which I do use in my smart home. Now both of those examples will connect those devices uh, via Bluetooth to their proprietary hubs, which I do think makes a difference. We'll talk more about proprietary hubs in a minute, um, but typically Bluetooth is a little bit slower and stuff. So that's not to say that all Bluetooth devices are bad. Thread has slowly started to replace Bluetooth for a lot of devices, I think like smart sensors and smart locks and things like that, typically low power devices. Thread is a new wireless protocol that was developed specifically for smart homes. It's typically much faster and more responsive than Bluetooth. Devices that use Thread to connect to your smart home do require a Thread border router. The good news is that your Apple Home Hub is also a Thread border router. Well, all of them except that Apple TV without the Thread radio built in, which is why I typically recommend not getting that one. Thread is a low power, self-healing wireless mesh protocol. Your Thread accessories will connect directly to your Thread border router or your Apple Home Hub, which is connected to the internet. So there are no proprietary manufacturer hubs needed for Thread devices. Now there are two types of Thread devices, sleepy end devices and Thread routers. Devices like wireless battery powered sensors, locks, etc., are typically end devices. And devices like smart bulbs, light switches, smart plugs, etc. These are devices that are always receiving power. These are thread routers. That means these devices can actually extend your thread mesh network, giving you more range for your thread accessories. So as opposed to Wi-Fi, where generally the more devices you have on the network, the more likely you will bog down and kind of slow down that network. With Thread, the more devices you have, the stronger your Thread network can actually become. Now, Wi-Fi is still another protocol that's very common in smart home accessories. Wi-Fi devices will connect directly to your home Wi-Fi network. But again, if you have a ton of Wi-Fi smart home devices, you could potentially clog up your network. This is another reason why it's important to first establish a solid home network with a good router before getting too deep into all this smart home stuff, as we discussed in the first video of this series. The better your network router, the more Wi-Fi devices it can handle. Some smart home devices can also be connected over ethernet hardwired. These devices don't rely on thread or Wi-Fi. Things like PoE cameras, manufacturers, bridges, or hubs may need to be hardwired over ethernet to your router or switch. I've even seen smart shades available that can be connected directly over ethernet. And then you have those bridge devices briefly mentioned earlier. So these will actually connect to your network over ethernet or Wi-Fi. A bridge is a device that allows you to connect smart home accessories that may use a different protocol to your Apple Home setup. They bridge accessories over to Apple Home. These accessories may use Zigbee, Z-Wave, or even some other proprietary protocol to connect to the bridge. That bridge then exposes those child accessories to Apple Home. Philips Hue is a really good example that many people are familiar with. Hue smart lights will connect to the Philips Hue bridge using Zigbee. And then once you connect your Hue bridge to Apple Home, all those connected smart lights are accessible in Apple Home. Lutron Caseta is another good example. Lutron uses its own proprietary Clear Connect wireless protocol to connect light switches and shades to their Lutron smart bridge. In any case, you will need to connect the third party bridge to your network and then those child accessories will be exposed to your Apple Home app through that bridge. Now you may be thinking, well, I clearly don't want to get smart home accessories that require an additional third-party bridge 
like these we're mentioning. And I do get that, but there are some benefits to these devices that connect through a bridge just to maybe consider. Acara sensors and accessories and Lutron Caseta smart switches have been some of the most reliable smart home devices in my smart home over the years. They stay connected and work really fast. Another nice thing about bridge devices is that you only need to connect your bridge to Apple Home and then all of those connected child accessories will automatically be added to Apple Home. So if you, you know, get new devices, say a new switch down the road, just connect it to your bridge and then that new switch will automatically be shown in the Apple Home app. It also makes troubleshooting, moving, or switching Wi-Fi networks much easier if you ever have to do any of those things. So I'm actually a fan of using bridges in some cases. I'd recommend this only if you really like a certain brand and plan to get more than just a couple devices to connect to your bridge. For example, you probably wouldn't want to have to get a bridge and add it to your home just for like one or two smart light bulbs uh, or switches, but it, you know, if you plan to put Philips Hue or Lutron switches throughout your entire house, then having that bridge might make sense. And that's also gonna be far less devices that you would have to add to your Wi-Fi network individually if you went with you know, an alternative Wi-Fi device. I'd much rather have 30 smart switches that connect to a bridge than 30 Wi-Fi smart switches that need to connect directly to my Wi-Fi network. Just something to consider. All right, now where does matter fit into all of this? If you've done any research at all, you've likely heard the term matter by now. Matter is the latest smart home standard aimed at improving interoperability and compatibility between different manufacturers and devices. It's secure and requires local control as an option, meaning your devices don't have to communicate with the cloud over the internet just to turn your lights on. It's the agreed upon standard by all the major smart home ecosystems, including Apple Home, Alexa, Google Home, SmartThings, and more. In theory, any smart home device that supports Matter will work with Apple Home or any other smart home ecosystem. At least that's the end goal. We're still in the early stages of Matter, so there are some nuances here and there, but that's the main concept. Matter is essentially the application layer. Everything we discussed earlier are connection protocols, uh, whereas Matter is the application layer that sits on top of those protocols. So Matter certified products may connect to your smart home using any of the previously mentioned protocols. There are Matter over Wi-Fi devices, Matter over Thread devices, Matter over Ethernet devices, and Matter over Bridge devices. And this is why I think it's important to understand the underlying connection protocols that your smart home devices are using. A Matter smart light switch may connect over Wi-Fi or it may connect over Thread or even through a bridge using Zigbee or something like that, for example. So it can be a little confusing when you're buying new devices. Matter is not perfect yet either. As mentioned, it's still in its infancy as a standard, but it has come a long way in the past couple of years. I use a number of Matter accessories in my home, and I do think getting Matter accessories is a good way to future-proof your home. One nice feature of Matter is something called multi-admin support. This allows you to connect your Matter smart devices to multiple ecosystems, even at the same time if you want. So that means you could buy a Matter smart light today and you can connect it to Apple Home or Google Home or Alexa or all of them if you want. Google, turn the Eve Energy 2 on. All right, turning Eve Energy 2 on. Hey, turn the Eve Energy 2 off. Okay. The Eve Energy 2 is off. This is nice if you decide you want to use or try a different smart home ecosystem down the road one day. So I am a fan of Matter, but it's not to say that you should only get devices that support Matter. There's still a number of devices that don't support Matter that I still use and recommend. Many of these devices still support all of the major ecosystems individually, but maybe don't support Matter. Lutron Caseta is a good example. I still use and I highly recommend Lutron. No Matter support yet still at the time of this recording, but Lutron still works with all of the major smart home ecosystems. And again, is something that I usually highly recommend. If you get a product without Matter support, you'll just need to make sure the smart home devices that you purchase support Apple Home or whatever ecosystem you might be using. So when buying new devices, just look for either that works with HomeKit or Apple Home logo or the Matter logo. If you see either one of those, you should be good to go. 
Also, if you have older devices that don't support Matter, but do maybe support HomeKit or Apple Home, there's no need to worry. These devices should continue working with your smart home for years to come. So now you understand the core of how your Apple Home smart home actually communicates. Your home hub serve as the brain of the operation, handling all of your automations and remote access. The various protocols, thread, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee maybe, and the bridges, those are kind of like the nervous system carrying the signals between your hubs and all your devices. And Matter, well, think of Matter as the universal translator that's just making it easier for different ecosystems to kind of understand each other, giving you more flexibility and future-proofing your smart home. Again, when shopping for smart home devices, I recommend first checking if it supports Matter or Apple Home. If it does, then look at which protocol it uses. Determine which protocol you prefer. For battery powered devices like sensors and devices that maybe I have a whole lot of, um, like smart switches or bulbs, I generally prefer Thread or devices that use a third party hub like Lutron Caseta or Acara. But I still have a number of Wi-Fi devices too on my network like Govi Lights and Nanoleaf and stuff that will connect directly to my Wi-Fi network. Cameras, because they require more bandwidth, will always connect over Wi-Fi unless you're able to uh, get and install power over Ethernet cameras. Now in the next video of our Apple Home 101 series, we'll build on everything we've covered so far. I'll show you how to organize your smart home, create a system for naming and grouping devices, and set up your first basic automations. We'll take all the technical foundation that we've built and start making it actually useful in your daily life. If you found this helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to catch the next part of this series. Drop any questions or comments down below. I'd especially love to hear which protocols you prefer using in your smart home. Thread, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, something else. Maybe you like to use them all like me. Let me know, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.